Great, thank you. Um, hope everyone can hear me okay and see my slides. Um, I am pretty excited to be able to uh, give this talk here today. Um, earlier this year in April, uh, we were able to finally complete a five year long endeavor to create an impact event in our vacuum chamber aboard a weightless aircraft. And we did this with the National Research Council in Canada as part of our Espresso survey node um, project uh, called Gravitas. And so um, uh, much thanks to my team and um, uh, especially uh, Alejandro Soto and um, uh, Alex Parker and Kevin Walsh, who are the uh, PIs and deputy PIs of these projects. Uh, and so well, I wanted to sort of um, give a little bit of a primer first uh, to why we why we care, why are we here? So um, of course we started this project in 2019. Uh, this was before the sample was collected at Bennu, um, but we knew that it was already a rubble pile body. And uh, as the project evolved, we uh, sort of evolved with it. And so um, we noticed that there are quite a lot of intriguing things going on in Bennu, and it is a very interesting body, uh, complete with uh, surface processes that are not well understood. Uh, a bouldery, cobbly, I think that's a word, um, surface that is lacking in fines, as we predicted, um, we meaning, I guess, the field, um, because of the uh, radiation pressures, uh, lofting, or impact events or other things that could blow away these small particles. Um, and also, of course, we noticed that there are um, uh, interesting surface topologies, uh, mass wasting events, um, things of this nature that would cause these particles to be ejected and potentially lost to space, uh, which would uh, alter that particle size distribution of boulders that we see. And finally, that there are not very many craters on these small rubble pile bodies, um, whether that's indicative of armoring or uh, low surface strength or infill um, uh, breakdown of the boulders. These are all sort of like where we hover with the, the open science questions here. And um, we in particular wanted to focus on the impact um, events that occur um, either through micrometeoroids or larger. And um, each one of these potentially creating their own ejecta that may be lost or alter, otherwise alter the surface. And so uh, to better understand that, we designed a series of impact cratering experiments um, designed to be in low gravity, of course, um, so that we could mimic the gravity of Bennu as best we can. Um, and we flew those above aboard that plane in a um, everything but the kitchen sink experiment that um, we're quite uh, pleased to be able to fly. Uh, so. This, this in turn will help us explore the cratering dynamics um, and ejecta dynamics that are dependent on gravity, uh, as well as other particle uh, properties. So um, the more general science questions um, that we have uh, presented there kind of flow into the science objectives for this project, um, which is to measure the crater size, depth, and the dynamics occurring in these various G levels that the aircraft will provide to us. Uh, the densities of the target and impactor and impact velocities, all of which we know are really important into crater scaling relations. Um, we need to measure the ejecta prop properties themselves, velocity distributions, the angles, the particle sizes. Uh, we need to determine the effects of these changing parameters on the cratering and ejecta dynamics and their dependencies and determine the relationships between um, these impact dynamics and what's occurring on small NEAs like Bennu uh, from our fitted parameters that we'll then uh, apply using these scaling relations to um, the small bodies. So we designed and flew an impact experiment that would be capable of doing that. And so that is what Gravitas is. So uh, here in the upper right, you can see sort of a 3D CAD model of the payload. And in the lower left, you can see the two chambers bolted onto the aircraft uh, prior to, to flight in April. So what this experiment is, is a, um, a vacuum chamber. Uh, we're sitting probably around you know, 50 millitor, something like that. Um, and we have a laser cross section that's um, strewn across the, the center of the target and a, um, basically a flywheel design BB gun launcher that operates inside the vacuum, uh, gasless projectile launcher to shoot uh, vertically down uh, incident to the surface through that laser plane. 
And so what you get is a crater um, cross section of the ejecta plume and crater an event. Um, and not uh, really talked about here in the this talk, uh, it's not really the purpose of this talk, is the gravitas uh, dust sensor, which is shown here um, in the left side of that chamber. You can see the red and green lasers intersect. And that is the, the um, prototype of Alejandro Soto and um, he spearheaded that aspect of the of the experiment, but I'm more focused on the cratering dynamics, um, which has to do with footage that a high speed camera records, uh, and you can see that in the lower right that we have a, a Kronos a high speed camera, um, and that's about a thousand frames per second, and we have a crater camera, which is what I nicknamed the GoPro that we put there, angled down at about I can't remember sixty or forty five forty five degrees or something like that to give you the crater depth and size that the um, sort of planar camera can't really see because the high-speed camera is more intended to film the ejecta um, in the laser plane. So um, we use those in tandem during the weightless section of the parabola. So um, it, it, for those not in, to initiate it, basically the aircraft does a nose dive um, from you know something like 20,000 feet to 10,000 feet roughly. And you get about 10 to 20 seconds of usable time, just depending on tons of factors. So in this case here, we had a, what felt like almost like a Nintendo, an old school Nintendo controller in my hands there in the lower right. Um, I am using the, the toggles there to open the tray lid, which is uh, closed to prevent loss of sand at other parts of the flight. And then I will uh, spin up the launchers and then I prime the launcher and um, then I fire the launcher once we're once the pilots announce sort of the uh, on condition. So that means that you are now in the prime aspect of the the parabola, the the cleanest microgravity of what we've requested. So um, we have two chambers so that we could work through a, a ton of different experiments. And these experiments were designed to be multi-shot. Uh, so the tray itself opens a lid, and there's a rake not shown that smooths the surface of the sand clean again and removes the projectile out of the way with a, a special mesh net type thing. So that way you have eight shots in the launcher's magazine and we could fire all eight um, in each chamber. So 16 shots per flight. Of course, that's ideal. <laughs> Everyone who does experiments know that you don't ever get uh, qu quite the, the full number. Um, but anyway- Three here, minutes. Yes, I'll, I'll speed way up. <laughs> We have our uh, two, uh, one of our examples here where we can see the high speed camera on the right and the crater cam on the left. Um, and I can just keep going here. So the impact parameters we studied uh, were quartz sand, um, 250 to 500 micron. And this was studying a range of three densities of uh, projectiles. Um, that way we could do the scaling relations. And we studied velocities in the regime of um, well, attempted to do 100 meters per second, but we only got about 65 and down and lower. And this is uh, occurring at lunar and what we're calling asteroidal gravity. So 0 0.16, 0 0.08, 0 0.05. I know Bennu is um, something like five to the negative five uh, meters per second squared. So um, probably a bit smaller, but that's all we were able to do in an aircraft with the, the uh, chamber bolted to the ground. So we stack these images for your uh, viewing pleasure, but really the, the Python code that was written processes them uh, into output. Um, and so it tracks these particles using a blob detection, uh, using libraries. And uh, we get the crater size and diameter um, from that as well. And so our output here is going to be the particle sizes and their speeds, the velocities in reference to a ground plane, which is the initial laser line laid down that the code actually extracts, uh, as well as the launch positions, uh, which is important for the scaling. One um, minute. Thank you. And so um, to use uh, to utilize this data uh, appropriately, we're going to be following similar methods to uh, Centala 1999, um, which is uh, using crater scaling relations, fitting exponents mu and nu from Hewson et al. and Pulse Apple Works, um, you know, uh, big names in the fields of cratering and impact scaling. So we basically follow all kinds of um, previous literature, Perry et al., et cetera. Uh, and we're basically going to be fitting the um, the ejecta velocity in the position and, and velocity phase space. And that gives you these, um, these exponents here. Um, so we designed an initial scaling model to help us place the laser sensors. And that's shown on the right there, utilizing those scaling relations um, with some assumptions 
built into from previous sand experiments, but we'll be we'll be deriving our own um, uh, low velocity, low gravity uh, scaling relations for these that hopefully we can apply to Bennu um, to understand the surface a little bit more and its uh, evolution. So um, we zero we, minutes. Uh, Thanks. Yeah, I'll just leave these conclusions <laughs> up here and say that, um, yeah, we do see our impacts are in line with previous studies uh, that are similar. And the next step will be to apply this um, scaling model to the impact results. So thank you.